This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. All right, guys, welcome to another exciting Boston WordPress meetup. Um, the Wi-Fi code, if you haven't logged in, WP0826 on the Cambridge network, bostonwp.org, at bostonwp on Twitter, and hashtag bostonwp. And as always, if you guys tweet, we will retweet if it's good enough, but retweet makes us look good. Uh, all right. Oh, yep. I'm lost here. Uh, we want to say thank you to uh, Microsoft. They've been uh, providing us with a venue for the past you know, four years. Um, been great AV, Wi-Fi, so it is. Uh, host gear. Um, if you guys are looking for hosting, they sponsor our event. Um, so check them out. It's just affordable, uh, shared hosting. We have a little code at the bottom, Boston WP Meetup, for a 25% discount. And our pizza sponsor for tonight, WP Engine. Um, they are a dedicated WordPress hosting uh, provider. Um, use the code WP Meetup Boston 2013 for one free month on a personal plan. I gave out t-shirts last month. Oh. Uh, we're done. We don't have more cool. t-shirts. So we have a website. It is up again, I think. Um, BostonWP.org. It's up and down. Uh, we're working on that. But it's a good place to go find all of our previous meetup videos, uh, meeting minutes, so who we spoke, what they spoke about. Uh, we have job boards, and they work. Uh, the submit job board, or the submit a job thing isn't as intuitive as it could be. Right now it's part of the navigation and the drop down. We'll make it more intuitive in the future, but just know it's there. Um, we also have forums. Not really much going on there. As always, if you guys want to use them for stuff, use them for stuff. And we have a GitHub. It says soon because soon it'll be more awesome than it currently is. It's currently pretty awesome, so check it out, friend us, share the one thing we have on there. Uh, but yeah. Um, I'm Kurt, by the way, if, 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 for all you first-timers. I'm John. Uh, we have Tom and Reiko in the back. Eric, who is somewhere in Canada. Um, Kadam. <coughs> and Kelly and Mel. So if you feel free to email us if you guys have any questions. Just want to chat. Uh, we're also on social media, so look us up on Facebook, Twitter. Um, we the URLs end in Boston WP. Uh, we're also on YouTube. That's where all our videos are hosted. Um, just do search for Boston WP, and uh, you'll find well over over 200 videos. Um, and we're also on Google Plus. Yeah, more active on Twitter. So once again, tweet at us. Uh, you can friend us on Facebook and Google Plus. Maybe that'll eventually become something awesome. For now, it's not much. Twitter. Um, so we're here through September, um, and in October, we have WordCamp Boston 2013. It is three days. Um, we're still planning it out as we speak. Um, it's definitely going to be a little bit smaller than it has been in the past. Um, we're still looking for speakers, so if you're interested, visit the website to submit a session. Um, we still have a call out for sponsors, and we will be releasing tonight a call for volunteers. So if you're interested in volunteering, helping us out, um, I'll have a forum out by the end of this meeting tonight, and it'll be up on our site. So if you're interested in helping, look there. And we have this awesome idea to crowdsource the header image for the website. Um, currently, it's one image. If you guys have images that you want us to put up there, send them in to any one of us, and we'll make sure it gets to the right person to approve it and put it up on the site. Uh, just anything Halloween, Boston, fall themed, uh, and we'll let you guys know what we think of that stuff. And if, if anyone's interested in speaking, uh, if you have any questions, come speak to me, and I can answer any questions and point you guys to the right place. The deadline for speakers is September 3rd. So Soon. If you um, are interested, and we'll get be one following in. up with an email to everybody in the meetup group. So no excuses. You can't say we didn't let you guys know. You know. Um, other WordPress meetups. So there's a Manchester, New Hampshire one. They're meeting on a monthly basis. Um, just email Jonathan May, and he will get you in touch with uh, where they meet up. 
And there's also the Providence WordPress meetup. And you can email Jesse. Oh, got rid of his email address. Damn. Well, you can send me an email. You can look him up. Jesse's yeah, a very up. important person. Yes. Um, other WordPress events. I know Tom and Reiko are going to be doing uh, a content marketing workshop and an SEO workshop on September 21st. Uh, if you're interested, visit the Toolbox Inc. Uh, for more information. Kurt, there was a... There's other... also a Portsmouth meetup. Do you know who, who... I probably have that somewhere. Do you know who's in charge of that? Amanda. So yeah, uh, normally at this point we let you guys speak if you guys have any questions or if anyone has any job opportunities. Uh, you can stand up, shout out your opportunity, and there are plenty of developers here, hopefully plenty of developers that want to help you. So anybody have any of the openings or anything that they want to shout out quickly? So uh, my company, Upstatement, is looking for two interns uh, coming up for the fall, a design intern and a development intern. Developer, uh, someone who might do a lot of or know some WordPress or some JavaScript, but wants to know a lot more. Um, so, if you have any questions, definitely talk to me after, or if you have an application, internships at upstate.com. Are you. they paid? Yes, great question. I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but yes, we pay in experience and money. <laughs> <laughs> yep. When is the next workshop? The. Uh, what, what, which workshop are you looking for? Uh, are you looking for a beginner, intermediate, uh, advanced, uh, intermediate? Yes, more the beginner. So I think uh, WordCamp. Probably. Yep. So we'll we'll be having workshops at WordCamp. Um, Nothing confirmed official. Yeah, event, we, we, we haven't set up a, a, an official schedule for what workshops we're hosting. Uh, we will have a beginner's workshop for sure. Um, anything outside of that, it's still up in the air. Um, we're hoping to have at least three or four workshops on Friday. Um, but as soon as we have more information, you know, we'll send out an email to the group um, and just check the WordCamp site and you know, all the information will be posted up there too. And if you're a, a, if you're a developer or just a uh, you know, business strategist or something and you are looking for work, uh, just meet me outside afterwards and give me your card and a little bit of what you can do and what you're trying to do, and I can try and uh, connect you with other people. Uh, hopefully between that, the job board, and this, we can hook everybody up. Yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a job, but I have a training opportunity. My name is Gene, and I help coordinate the Boston PHP meetup. So underlying WordPress is PHP and MySQL. If you wanted to learn a little bit more about PHP and MySQL, we're starting up a virtual self-study group starting on September 1. So just go to bostonphp.org and all the information is there for you if you're interested. Oh, John, yeah. should we announce the post, the job post that it's submitted to your website? Yeah. Oh, do you have it? As we mentioned earlier, we do have a job board on the website. Um, unfortunately, the website went down recently, so we're still currently working to get the applications that have been submitted through that board back online. But there have been a couple, and if you submit a position or an opening or a request for a developer through our website, bostonwp.org, we do read them out at these meetups. So currently, uh, even Jermaine is looking for someone to teach a workshop on WordPress and blogging. Um, Scott from Boston is looking to engage a local WordPress developer for some ongoing weekly maintenance and support. Um, Ken from Gambits is looking for a plugin developer for a custom job. That's me, by the way. Oh, okay. So can you speak to more about what you're looking for, or did you find someone? Uh, yes and no in that order. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm building a website and I need to be able to create a sortable, searchable table of all the users, the registered users, and their social media profiles. I have a couple of ideas of how that can be done using custom post types, but I'm not qualified to actually implement the idea. And I can show you a demo of what I'm, I'm thinking it would look like. Thanks. And finally, Kirsten Alberg is looking for a, um, is starting a WordPress blog development business in Michigan. 
and is looking for her project's developers to assist with uh, work that she's taking in there. Um, if you're particularly, if you're a freelance consultant, continue to check um, bossofwp.org, the jobs page. We'll be trying to get these up and streamlining the process for people to post opportunities like this. Um, and if you're looking for people uh, to help with projects, that's where we would recommend you go to submit a job through that page rather than emailing out to the meetup because it gets lost in the shuffle with the meetup and this way it provides people a one-stop shop to figure out what the opportunities are. Thank you. Team Incognito. Hi, Team Anybody else? So uh, well, we're going to have two talks today. And myself and a few other volunteers will be outside answering your 10 to 15 minute WordPress questions, uh, if you have them. Uh, but yeah, so. Uh, uh, first up, we're going to have Steph. Uh, she's going to be talking about VIP tools for writers and editors, and followed up by Mel, WordPress design trends, both from Automatic. I always get a little nervous before talks, and I saw this like CPR thing, like what to do if someone has a heart attack, and I'm like, that's for me. Shit. Okay. All right. Okay. So, hi, I'm Steph Yu. Um, I'm talking to you about VIP tools for writers and editors. Um, so, I'm going to give you a little background about myself. Um, I was born in Hong Kong. And then I lived in China for a while when I was a baby. I don't remember any of it. Um, then I lived in Taiwan for a bit um, until I was like six or seven. And then I lived in Singapore until I was 18 when I moved to Chicago for college. It's very cold, like transition from Singapore. Chicago was crazy. Um, but in 2008, I wanted to start an online magazine about people who have international lifestyles, people who kind of grow up internationally and have lived all over the world and um, kind of share stories. And I knew it, I didn't want to just do me. I didn't want to like have a blog. I wanted to like have lots of contributors and bring lots of people in. So I did what I think most of you have done, which is like go online and Google like best blogging magazine making type software thing, like on Google. I'm sure if you type that in, something will show up. And uh, what showed up for me was WordPress. Uh, so in 2008, without any developer knowledge or any knowledge of anything except for knowing how to write and edit pictures, um, I downloaded WordPress. And um, there was just a ton of documentation out there, so I just started figuring it out. Um, how to find a host, all right, got that set. Um, how to buy a domain, set it up, DNS, all that stuff is really confusing and difficult. Um, and then uh, spinning it up. And we got it online, surprisingly, without too much trouble, because WordPress is awesome and easy to use. Um, so I got my theme. I got my editors and writers working with me. I installed like a bajillion plugins trying to figure out what to do. Um, and the site was up and running. And um, it's been up and running for about five years now. I still run it today. And I thought that everything was fine and dandy and awesome until I started working at WordPress.com VIP. Um, these guys are the real guys who run WordPress sites for huge um, kind of national online publications. And then I realized, well, crap, I've been doing everything wrong, and they actually got it all right. Me and my little magazine, I was trying to figure it all out, but they actually figured it all out. And a lot of the tools that they use are free and available for download online. And so I just started to borrow all of their ideas. Um, so today's talk is really about all of their ideas that I borrowed and applied to my own magazine, hoping that for some of you who are small publishers who are running small websites can borrow them too. Just to give you a little bit of background and why I care so much about writers and editors, um, my whole career has been kind of in journalism and publications. So I used to work at America's Test Kitchen, uh, where I was a new media strategist, and I launched their kind of WordPress blog, and I worked with their editorial team, uh, creating content and working with them on how to create content, uh, kind of create a great content workflow inside of WordPress. 
Before that, I worked at the Chicago Tribune where I worked with a bunch of freelance bloggers and curating their content onto the site. Um, back in a different life, I was a design intern at the Oregonian and the Boston Globe, but I was a really terrible designer, which is why I stopped doing it. Um, I was the web editor at my college paper at Northwestern, and I was pro what I'm probably most proud of is that I was the editor of my high school paper in Singapore. Um, it was called The Eagle Eye, and I learned a ton doing it. So. So I just started working at WordPress.com VIP last year. Um, it'll be my one year anniversary at WordPress.com um, in September, actually. And it's been an awesome, awesome ride. Uh, if you're not familiar with WordPress.com VIP, what we do is we provide support and hosting for really, really high-end publications and publishers. Um, so if you did not know, uh, actually huge parts of Time and CNN.com both run on WordPress.com and are running WordPress. Um, all the New York Times and Washington Post blogs run on WordPress, and we provide support for them. And then pretty much all of Quartz or QZ.com from Atlantic Media, GigaOM, TechCrunch, TED, New England Sports Network, they are all running on WordPress.com. And so part of my job as kind of an account engineer at Automatic is um, I work with all these writers and editors at these awesome publications. I get to go visit them in their newsrooms and learn about how they use WordPress, what we could do better for them, um, what doesn't work. Um, and it turns out there's all sorts of awesomeness that they use that we're going to steal from shortly. So what are their secrets? Steph, tell me. What plugins do they use? What tools do they use? OK, so before I get to that, I'm actually going to walk you through the basics because I learned a ton of basic stuff from VIP, which I wish I had known when I started out. Um, which people just assumed that I would know, but I didn't actually know. Um, a lot of the developers in the room, it might be super obvious to you, but if you're a writer and, or an editor, it's not super obvious to me. So I'm just going to walk through it. If you know this stuff, you can feel free to tweet me. My Twitter handle is right here. So the first thing is update your WordPress. Wasn't super obvious to me. I didn't realize that this was an important thing to do, um, but turns out it is. Every VIP on WordPress.com actually gets updated automatically. Um, we actually push them through the cycles. Every time there's a new release, we make sure they get updated. There are two reasons why you want to update. One, you get cool free stuff. So uh, the most recent release is 3.8. It came out just a few, I think just a few weeks ago, maybe over a month ago. 3.6. 3.6, what did I say? Oh, I don't know why I said that. Sorry. 3.6. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. I'm nervous, so I'm like jumping all over the place. So 3.6 just came out, and one of the really, really cool features about 3.6 is that there's this thing called post locking. For an editor, it's a total godsend, and it's been amazing for big national publications and publications that have tons of writers. What post locking does is if I'm in a post and I'm working on it, and another editor hops in, it gives them a screen that says, hey, but out, Steph is in there editing. Don't overwrite her stuff. So that's totally awesome. And if, as an editor, when I visit the all post screen, it shows me what writers are in there working. Um, so for you know, a publication that publishes 40, 50 times a day and has 10 writers in there, you can hop to the all post screen. And as an editor, you can kind of stalk your writers and see what people are working on. Um, so that's a free feature um, that if you didn't update to 3.6, you wouldn't get. The second reason, and probably the most important reason for updating, is security. There's a WordPress security team, and they're always pushing patches, and they're always fixing bugs. If you don't update your WordPress, you're making yourself vulnerable. That's probably the most important reason why you should update your WordPress. Now, as an editor who may not have known the in, like, inner workings of WordPress, I was always really scared to update, because I thought it would break stuff. As it turns out, WordPress is really, really focused on backwards compatibility, which is something that um, a couple other CMSs <clears throat> that I'm not going to mention uh, do not focus on. So um, what happens is the WordPress core team actually really, really focuses on making sure that plugins that people use don't break when you update. Um, so they might move a little bit more slowly uh, to make sure that backwards there is backwards compatibility. But basically, all you need to know is that when you update, as long as you're kind of keeping with the cycles, things shouldn't break. The next thing is protect your site. A uh, couple obvious things uh, that I wish I had known sooner. Uh, the first thing is when I started my site, and because I have a lot of contributors working with me, anytime anybody wanted to contribute to my site, wanted to 
publish content or upload photos, I'd be like, sure, Suzanne, here, have admin access. It's the easiest thing to do. Um, you know, you're not worried about permissions, and I trust her, she's fine. Well, the thing is, Suzanne might make a password of like one, two, three, four, five, and then I suddenly have a vulnerability on my site. So what you don't want to do is hand out admin privileges to just anybody willy-nilly. You want to keep an admin privilege for yourself and for anybody else who you add onto your site. Make sure you make them an editor or contributor, but don't give them full access to your site. Um, it's not that you don't trust them. It's just that it's just another hole for someone else to like, hop in, especially if someone hacks their email or anything like that. Um, the other thing is that you don't want your admin username to be admin. Uh, this was something that was a setting in kind of older versions of WordPress, but in newer versions of WordPress, you can actually change that. Uh, so make sure your admin username is something else that people can't easily guess, and it just gives you an extra layer of security. And finally, make a tough password. Make it random, lots of crazy characters. You know, don't use like a five-letter password that has no exclamation points or things like that in there. Back up your site. So on WordPress.com VIP, we actually back up every hour. You don't need to do that for your site, probably. Um, I, I have... Um, like I have my hosting company help me out with backups. You may have a solution that you want. There's a great plugin called VaultPress that'll do backups for you automatically every 24 hours, I think. Um, so back up your site. We do it for VIPs, so you should do it for yours too. What are you using for um, So I use DreamHost, and they help me out with my backups because I can just export them. But there's also a plugin called VaultPress. Vault. Yeah, VaultPress um, that you can install. And I think it's like free for the first year, and then you can pay for it afterwards. And finally, be picky with plugins. So I was telling you that when I first started my site, I was just installing any plugins willy-nilly because I just wanted all sorts of awesome stuff on my site, not knowing that every time I install a plugin, it's another vulnerability on my site. Um, every time you introduce third-party code into your site, you're introducing another vulnerability. And on WordPress.com VIP, we review every single plugin that VIPs activate on their site just to make sure that things are locked down, safe and secure, and optimized. Um, what you want to do with your plugins is once you don't use them anymore, deactivate them and delete them. Um, and if you are selecting new plugins, uh, check them out. You know, like, is, has it been updated in the last two years? Um, are they reputable? Do they have lots of plugins? Do they have great ratings? You don't want to pick a plugin that someone's just written in five minutes and you know, provides no support or you know, anything that you need. So be super picky with your plugins. All right, ready to get into some cool tools? All right. OK, so the first problem that I faced when I was at Denizen was how to plan and collaborate inside WordPress. Um, you know, as you know, especially back in 2008, uh, WordPress was really a blogging platform for one and I had multiple editors and writers in there working with me. So there's a great plugin that VIPs use, and it's called EditFlow. And it's actually built by a team of students who um, worked on college papers, and they wanted to use WordPress and kind of quickly and easily get some kind of newsroom tools. Um, so this plugin is called EditFlow, and it gives you a couple of awesome tools that you can use if you have multiple editors with you know, kind of a unique workflow. The first thing is custom statuses. So inside WordPress, there's, you know, I think two or three kind of statuses like pending, draft, published, schedule, something like that. Uh, with EditFlow, you can actually create your own custom statuses. So with a lot of VIPs, I've seen them use different statuses like um, copy edit OK, senior editor OK, things like that, so that you can just move a draft through the workflow inside WordPress. Uh, the other tool that EditFlow comes with is an editorial calendar. So as you know, inside uh, WordPress, when you click on the All Post page, it drops down. You see all your stories in a, in a vertical stream. With the editorial calendar, you can actually have it view in a calendar mode and pick if you want it one week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever. You can drag and drop stories and move them across the calendar to reschedule them. You can add um, new stories, kind of like as you like add an event in Google Calendar. Um, just like add a new story, and then you can assign it to someone. Um, so just a really great way for like an editor mind to kind of look at all your posts and what's coming up. This is probably my favorite. It's called um, editorial comments. So what happens is in the edit post page, sometimes I want to leave my writer a comment. How do I do that? Um, it gives you, uh, edit flow gives you the opportunity for editorial comments. And when I leave a comment as an editor, it emails my writer and says, hey, Steph's 
left a comment for you. Make sure you check that out. And it also gives you notifications. So for example, if you are an editor and you want to track you know, six or seven stories inside of WordPress, you can check your name. And then as the drafts move through the workflow, it'll email you every time the state is changed. Um, so super great if you're watching a bunch of stories at once. And then this is actually a cool new tool. It's so funny, my screenshot fell from me. Are they good over there? That one's better. Yeah, that one's better? Ooh, interesting. Um, so this tool is actually built for blogs that publish a ton, like blogs that don't want to leave WordPress because their workflow is so fast. Um, so you can see it over here, better. There's like a dashboard notification here. So it allows an editor to leave a comment in the dashboard, and then any time a writer hops into the dashboard, they don't ever have to leave WordPress for their workflow. So for blogs that publish a lot, it's actually pretty important because you know seconds lost are important to them. This is a neat other plugin. So if you've ever worked in a newsroom, if you've ever worked in a newsroom, you'll know that newsrooms have style guides, um, things like AP style guide or code of ethics or interviewing techniques and things like that. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to admit like a deep, dirty, deep, dirty secret here. All right, so when I first started Denizen, I had a serious problem with how to curate a home page, especially since I wasn't um, a developer and I didn't really know how to curate a home page. So my deep, dark, dirty secret is that I used to hop into the code and just drop in the blog, uh, the blog post ID or the category ID to change like what would display here. As it turns out, the VIPs haven't figured out because it's actually pretty important for them to curate their home pages. Um, so they actually have these tools that help them with drag and drop curation. Um, there's two of them that I'm showing here. One is called Dominator, which is actually built by the VIP team. And the other one is called Advanced Custom Fields, which is built by someone outside VIP. They're both great plugins. And the general concept is the same. Um, you kind of type into the search field your whatever you're searching for. Um, the stories will pop in. And um, you can just drag and drop into the right and drag and drop into so if you can see in this funky screenshot, um, like right, this side is like where I'm searching, and this side is where I'm populating the content. And if you look on the home page, it's actually this step here. And um, it goes in order of like what you drop in. So that's a much, much better method than me hopping in and editing the code, which is a terrible way of doing it. But I'm hoping that this will help you out, so I'm admitting to you my deep, dark secrets. <laughs> All right, so the next issue is managing guest authors. So sometimes you write a post, and there's two of you working on it. Like my friend Suzanne and I would write posts together, and then when I go in to put in our bylines, well, crap, there's only one spot for a byline. What do I do? Well, what I used to do was I would create a whole new user and put, like, first name, like, Steph, you, and, and then second name, like, like last name, like, Suzanne Lung or whatever. There's a better solution for this. Um, it's called Co-Authors Plus, um, and when you activate the plugin, it allows you to have multiple bylines in your stories. It's pretty much like as soon as you activate it, um, you will have multiple bylines, and you can just you know type in the author names and search for them. Um, another issue that I was I would run into as an editor is that I would often have um, guest authors who would write for me, but they'd only write for me once, and I didn't really want to have to give them a login because. They're only going to write for me once. Why should I create a whole login when they're like they're just going to email a Word doc to me and then never log in again? So Co-Authors Plus gives you the option for something called a guest author profile. Um, so you can actually create a new byline and a new guest author, um, and then you can just use it as a regular author. You just don't have to create a byline and go through the whole like email verification process and everything. And you can manage their bio and manage their um, picture. So everything that you kind of need for a kind of fake author profile. 
Um, at this point, I feel like 90% of the VIPs are using this because it's such a frequent problem. Are you guys able to see it okay? I feel like this is kind of funky. You're okay? All right. All right, so this is another problem that VIPs have that maybe I don't have, but if you cover live events, um, you, do, you might have. Um, we have you know, VIPs like TechCon, so they help cover like, the Apple keynote events, or we have YouTubers who cover like, red carpet stuff, or Oscars, or games, and things like that. Um, so the question was, how do you blog live events on WordPress, and how do you do it quickly so that you're competing with Twitter, and you're bringing traffic to your site instead of onto Twitter? How can you quickly embed things from Twitter? And how can you not use outside software like Cover It Live so that all the content is on your blog and not kind of trapped in some other sort of third-party content provider? Um, so the VIP team actually built this plugin. Um, it's called LiveBlog, and it's a, a live blogging software that's built into WordPress. So what you do is, once you've activated the plugin, you hop over to your edit post page, and there's a new meta box that appears that says, um, enable live blog. And once you do, you can create a headline and create you know, the blurb that goes on top of the live blog. You hit publish, and then you can just hop over to the front end of the site. Is that over there? Um, and you can actually just start typing in this box right here, and you'll actually publish right from the front end. So it works kind of just like Twitter. Um, you can drop in the HTML tags in there and it's bold and links and stuff. Actually, the next version of this plugin will have the rich text editor. Um, and also, it's kind of neat, if you drop any uh, Twitter permalink, it'll actually embed the tweet for you. Um, but it's super cool because it's built for speed, so you can drag and drop in images and publish right away because, you know, you're working so quickly. Um, and there's smart updates. So um, every time there's a new update, um, it'll actually, oh, can you see it? It's kind of yellow. It turns kind of yellow, um, and it kind of pops in. And then if you're, if you're reader, you're further down on the page, um, um, so the reader never has to refresh. They're just sitting on the page watching you blog about, you know, whatever live event is going on. Um, so some examples. Uh, the National Post in Canada uses this. The other example I gave was TechCrunch, but my examples on the slides are National Post. Um, so they use it for their um, red carpet events. Um, they'll drop in images from, like, AP, Reuters, whatever, just to kind of give their style columnists, you know, things to talk about. Um, they'll also use it for breaking news events, which is super cool. Um, so anytime there's, like, a weather, breaking weather news story, they will spin up a live blog, and then they'll drop in, like, tweets and photographs from, like, everybody who's talking about the storm. Um, so it's a really awesome plugin. Um, all right. So another problem that I would face this time when I was working at America's Test Kitchen um, so at America's Test Kitchen, Thanksgiving is like a really big deal because we have so many Thanksgiving recipes that we really want people to see. And so I'd always want the redirect like domain slash Thanksgiving. But in order for me to get this redirect, I'd have to hop like 80 hoops and find like an IT guy or a tech guy to help me create this like one vanity redirect for this one promotion period that we have. And then like on like on like the week that it's starting, you have to remind them to like start like put in the redirect. So there's actually a plugin that um, I think Tenup built um, called Safe Redirect Manager, and it's totally totally awesome because you can actually create redirects right inside your WP admin. Um, so it's basically like you go into Tools and then you hop into Safe Redirect Manager and you can just create a redirect. And if you know the differences between 301, 302, and 303, you can actually change those in there. And then when you hit Publish, the redirect goes live. You can schedule it, which is awesome. Before you, yeah. A redirect means, like, if I go to, like, steph.com slash Thanksgiving, it'll redirect me to, like, a post that may actually have a longer URL, like steph.com slash 2013 slash 08 slash 26 slash post title dot whatever. Um, so this is just, like, a pretty way of, you know, sending out, um, like, a pretty redirect. So... Like for America's Test Kitchen, if we wanted to do like promotional materials, like it would all be like slash Thanksgiving, and that way people can quickly type it in and get to it. Cool? So the other cool thing about redirects, Safe Redirect Manager is that you manage your redirects just like you manage posts. So if you need to add these redirects and remove them or whatever, they're all right there for you. It's no, you don't forget which redirects you've set up in the past. I have a question. Sure. Does it keep 
keep track of how many times each redirect has been triggered? I do not think so. I think people use like Bitly and stuff like that for that, right? I have a plugin that you can count There you go. You can tweet it and share it. Awesome. Well, you should tweet that out so everybody can see it. Cool. Any more questions about redirects before I move on? No? <coughs> um, all right. The next one is about sharing posts on social media, uh, which is funny because we just talked about Twitter. Um, so for a lot of uh, blogs that update really, really frequently, um, they don't necessarily have a social media manager to manage all of their tweets and all that fun stuff for them. Um, so there's actually a neat plugin uh, that actually helps you do auto tweets and auto Facebook posts. It's actually bundled into a plugin called Jetpack, which I think most of you have heard of at this point. And if you haven't, um, it's a plugin that was built by Automatic, which is the company that um, runs WordPress.com, and it gives your self-hosted site a ton of plugins that WordPress, uh, a ton of features that WordPress.com has. Um, so there's actually something like 27 features in there, which I'm not going to walk through. Uh, but I'm going to talk about the sharing ones, because I think they're super neat. Um, so the first one is Publicize. So this gives you the opportunity to hook, into, hook your WordPress blog up to things like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. I think they even introduced Path or something recently. Um, so what happens is when you update a post, you can have it auto-checked, and when you hit publish, it'll actually auto-tweet and auto-LinkedIn and auto-Facebook and all that fun stuff for you. Um, the default message is headline and then short URL, um, but you can put a custom message in if you don't want the default message, which is pretty sweet. Um, the other one is share tools. So uh, for, you know, if you want to add like a share bar at the top or bottom of your post, um, Jetpack actually gives you that capability. You can drag and drop services in and like re drag and drop rearrange them. And then if you want to add new services, you can actually do that. Um, so I activated this because it was so useful. And then uh, it gives you the opportunity for social logins for comments. So if you have a WordPress blog, but you want people to be able to leave comments using their Facebook login or their Twitter login, um, Jetpack gives you the ability to have people log in to comments using um, these awesome tools. Um, so remember at the beginning when I told you that when I launched Denizen, I installed a million different plugins? Probably half of those were me trying to figure out galleries because um, I wanted beautiful galleries on my WordPress site, and every gallery plugin that I installed was ugly or was really hard to manage, um, like all the photos and where they went. Um, so Jetpack, the plugin that I just talked to you about, has some really awesome plugin, uh, some really awesome galleries. Um, so the way they work, the way they work is um, you drag and drop pictures in from your desktop, drop them in, they upload right away, and then once you create a gallery, um, you can select the images that you want in your gallery, and you can drag and drop and rearrange them, and type in the captions right underneath, and then you get the option of doing like a thumbnail grid, a tiled mosaic, or a tile circles or a slideshow gallery. Um, which look like that. So they look awesome. Um, the mosaic one will actually make them all fit for you with some awesome smart math in there. Um, so it will make all the pictures fit for you. There's circles, which I've actually never really seen anybody use. If you want to use it. And then there's tiles. And when you click on it, um, they pop up into these big, beautiful light box things. And you can use your keyboard to slide between them. Um, this was the reason why I installed Jetpack on my site. I was like, these are awesome and beautiful. Um, and they're all like embedded into WordPress. Like I didn't, I didn't have to drop in some third party stuff. Um, so awesome, awesome galleries. And finally, I wanted to share this. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so if you do the like actual like standard slideshow embed, I think you can conform those those sizes. 
But for these guys, they'll just fill in the width of your blog post. Oh, just to embed into your blog post? Totally. Well, it won't crop them to make them fit into the square and things like that. Yeah, it won't like it's not gonna let you like fix like say, oh, I want this arch up here or something like that. So it'll just kind of do the math for you. Um, so that one comes from. Do you see these options? It's so fuzzy, but it's called Kyle Monday. Um, and what it'll do is actually it'll just do the math for you, and you can just rearrange them. And it'll make some vertical, some horizontal. It's a little random. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I had my website with the same thing for a long time, and it posted with uh, what posts you had forever. And then um, I don't have that. And, but I do sites for a lot of clients, so I put it on the computer and mm -hmm. get that back. And I actually have a link to this. And um, so now this makes me want to have these plugins on my site. But since I don't have that, back, are they available with this plugin? You would have to install the Jetpack plugin. Jetpack is a plugin, so you can actually just enable it. Oh, so you can get it even if it's not as part of this thing. Yeah, 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 totally. You can download it and install it. And actually, something that's neat is that Jetpack has, um, on this page, if you go to jetpack.me, um, there's like the 27-ish um, cool tools that it gives you. Um, I'm only walking through some of them. Um, but once you install the Jetpack plugin, there's a tab that says Jetpack. And then it'll show you all of the services, and you can click it, enable or disable um, as you need services. Yeah. Thanks for asking questions, guys. Um, where am I? Oh, right. So drafting articles within WordPress. Um, so if you are a writer and you've worked in WordPress for a while, um, Writing in that tiny little post screen can be kind of a pain, especially if there are widgets in the right side and there's headline, and it's just like you're working in this tiny little screen. Um, so someone told me about this neat tool that's actually built into WordPress that I only found out about recently. <laughs> it's called distraction-free writing. Um, so if you know about it, props to you, but I did not know about this until recently. Um, so um, there's a button to share um, a couple other tools that I've seen them use that are not WordPress necessarily. Um, VIPs, they're just like us. Um, so I've seen almost every VIP use Chartbeat and Google Analytics. And what they'll do is they will set up um, email alerts for when their traffic spikes or whatever, or they'll watch um, Google Analytics real time um, so that they can track and find out when things are going viral or things spike. Um, Something that was kind of cool is that I've seen them use Facebook groups um, for kind of communication. So uh, we, ha we work with a, a television network that is distributed across the United States with tons of little different stations everywhere. And uh, they'll use Facebook groups and they'll just stay in it all day and post and update and talk to each other using Facebook groups. So who knew? It could be really useful. Um, I've also seen VIPs use Google Docs to plan story budgets. So um, the editors and reporters will use Google Docs to plan out their budget for the day. They'll use it because you can drop in pictures and links and, and kind of keep an idea of what, you know, what should be published tomorrow. And they'll use Gchat to edit, which I feel like that's kind of an obvious one. Uh, post by email. Oh, so the last bit is that uh, I've seen VIPs and reporters kind of take WordPress out of the newsroom and use um, their iPhones and mobile to blog. Um, so post by email, Jetpack gives you the ability to um, have a unique, your, uh, unique email address that you can email into. And you can actually tell it if you want it to be a draft or a published date. Um, so you can email that in, and it'll save it as a draft or save it as a published or scheduled or whatever. Um, and then there's the WordPress mobile app, which I've seen some of you play with already. Um, and what that gives you the opportunity to do is 
um, draft up stuff in kind of WordPress mobile. Uh, so there was actually a reporter in Ontario who, this is sort of like, it feels like such a cliche to tell this story, but they were like not in the newsroom, like out getting lunch or something, and happened to be on the scene of a fire. I know, it sounds so cliche. And then they like pulled out their iPhone and started taking pictures in WordPress mobile and started blogging before anyone else did. Um, and their editors loved it, and they actually used that one instance to uh, convince their newsroom to switch over to WordPress because their team could take WordPress with them out of the newsroom. Um, so those are some tools. Um, so, like I said, since last year, I've learned a ton from the VIPs. I've learned all about what I did wrong, and I've applied a ton of it to my own site. And so I hope that now you can borrow from the VIPs too. That's it. So if you want to learn more about the VIPs, it's vip.wordpress.com. And if you want to see the slides and all the plugins I talked about, you can go to my site and it's slash Boston WP. Sure, questions? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so uh, I can't even remember the name of it because it's from 2008. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Futurosity, Futurosity Mag. But it's been so long that the company that created it is now actually out of business. And also, um, I've completely redone the homepage since then. So it's been hacked a bit. It's kind of a mess, but it's OK. But it's better now. So I actually don't use multi-site, and WordPress.com is actually one giant multi-site with 65 million blogs within it and all the VIPs. So I actually can't comment on that. Can anyone here talk about multi-site? Sure, yes. Steven, you could do it. Uh, yeah, so I actually really enjoy doing that um, for sites that are like the same type of site. So if you're running like a bunch of content sites, I'll throw those all into a multi-site because they'll use the same type of plugins. However, if I'm running like five or six domains that are different types of sites, like one's a new site and maybe one is using maybe press for forms or something like that, I will separate those out into their own installs. So the rule of thumb, if the sites are similar, I usually combine them. It makes managing it easier. You only have to update things once. Um, but if the things are way too different, then you're going to end up with 50 plugins in there, and then that's another type of management nightmare. So anyway, that's okay. You can go find them later and go stalk them. Yep. Yeah, so are you saying like you don't have access to a laptop, so you're just live blogging from your phone? Exactly. So the live blog plugin actually works on your phone. So like I've actually tested it out where I'll spin up, because as long as you're logged in to WP Admin on your phone browser, you can actually hop over that page and start typing and posting. So that's what I've done before. So. Meaning that okay, so if somebody puts um, if they, they'd have to all be users, they post the story, and then different people would tweet it and comment on it right there, or you know, put their edits in. Well, if they are, um, I mean, that's kind of how I I run Denizen right now. I have multiple editors and writers working in WordPress with me, so they have access as an editor to all the articles, right? Um, when they log in, so then they can go and use Edit Flow to leave comments and work together. Um, so that's how I would do it. Would, is there any other suggestions from other people? Yeah, there you go. I could do it too. Oh, I see. 
Oh, so there is a, there, um, okay, well, this was the one that, um, like, this was the one that I was referring to, where, like, in the edit post screen, there's a meta box that appears underneath the post, and you can leave comments. Um, obviously, for inline editing, where, like, you're looking for, like, strike through and all that stuff, probably Google Docs is a better alternative. There is a plugin called, what's the ICE plugin? What's it called? The New York Times plugin? Okay, I can't remember the name of it, but it's written by the New York Times team, and it's called ICE or some, something along those lines. I'll have to find it and email you. Um, what it does is it actually does track changes inside WordPress. So it'll do, like, when you delete something, it'll strike it through. But I think it's a pretty old plugin, so I don't know if it's been updated in a while. But that's the closest thing that I've heard of to something that gives you, like, track changes like you would do in Google Docs or in Word. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Oh, that's a whole other question. <laughs> I am not a developer, um, but I just saw an awesome, awesome presentation in WordCamp, uh, in WordCamp Providence or WordPress Providence by a um, developer called Chris Fernandi, um, where he actually walked. It was like an hour-long presentation on like ten things that you can do to speed up page load time. Um, I will, if you come find me later, I'll, I'll send you the slide deck. Does Google Plugins do JavaScript? It does. Any devs want to talk I mean, about it? There are many, many ways. What, uh, I was also was a, uh, was a meetup in Providence last month. The biggest thing is there's a, is a caching plugin. There are many of them. The simplest one is definitely Quick Cache. It's like one click install, and in 99% of circumstances, it'll give you 90% biggest other thing that at least I've seen working with other bloggers is they are, they take a picture on their digital camera, they upload it to their blog, yeah. and that same five megabyte pixel or five megabyte image that they took on their digital camera is being served to every user. So those are like the two big things that I've seen out there that you can do. Yeah. But Chris gave an, an excellent yeah, he talked about everything from like concatenation to like, like, like you know, SAS and all that fun stuff for CSS. So I'll send that talk to you. It was really, really good. Um, something. Hmm. Yeah, we should bring him over. But the other uh, thing is, if you use Jetpack, um, it en actually enables a service called Photon, which is a CDN. It's a free CDN that you can use. So, and it actually will automatically deliver. Um, the correct size. So if someone's in Retina, it'll de deliver a Retina images image, and if they're in a smaller kind of mobile screen, it'll, it'll deliver a smaller image. Um, so if you download Jetpack and enable Photon, it'll give you that um, functionality, which will speed up load time. Yeah, sure. Yes, sir. Sure. Yep. Okay. Okay, well thank you so much. I didn't die, so that's good. <laughs>